I'm making this recording as a way to help you guys understand the relationship with AutoCAD and drafting, but also so you can take notes. I'm not expecting you to draft this object out, but I am expecting you to sketch this item out. And I want you to sketch it pretty much as cleanly as possible. You're going to need a piece of paper to do that and a pencil. Um, I'm going to use drafting tools and um, I'm going to show you a little bit about what they mean and how they work while I do this. So I'm going to get set up for that. So I have a couple of pencils here. I have one that's a, um, uh, they look the same. I've got different leads loaded in these. This is a soft lead and this one will make dark lines. Um, this one is a very hard lead. It's going to make very light lines. And so I'm wanting to make sure you can see both of those. Not at all. So we need to focus this camera again. Let's see if that'll do it. There we go. And you can see both those kinds of lines. Again, um, I'm going to be using two pencils. So this, this pencil makes light lines here. And it's the lead that's loaded inside there that does that. Um, this one has a softer lead. So I get a darker line out of it. So I'm going to be drawing a title block with you. I'm going to need a few tools for that. I'm going to have a triangle. I've got this thing taped down onto a parallel bar. So in AutoCAD, we use ortho mode, um, and it sort of emulates what that tool set does right there with the triangle locked down. That's a 90 degree angle. And then um, the, this would be a horizontal, and that would be a vertical. So it locks it in just like we would in AutoCAD. With, um, with the same tools uh, that we use. You know, this would be like ortho mode. And so these are kind of keys to drafting successfully. What I'm going to start with here is I need to draw out um, the size of a piece of paper on here. And in AutoCAD, you're going to be doing the same thing. This uh, exercise that I'm doing right now is uh, referred to as the handout in AutoCAD uh, in the video set that you're going to watch. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw a vertical line. And I'm going to draw an intersecting horizontal line, like so. And then I need to set my measurements. Just like in AutoCAD, you need to have uh, a way to, keeps going out of focus. I've got a screen turned where I can see what's going on. Um, that looks pretty good. I think it's catching my arm as I reach into the frame and that's throwing its focus. Maybe if I leave something on the table, it can stay in focus. I wish it would stop focusing, but I'm not sure I can make it do that. Um, either way, um, let's see if we can just continue. So I'll keep an eye on that. So um, I'm going to start by uh, measuring out the size of piece of paper. So just like in AutoCAD, you've got a um, you've got to tell it where to begin and where to end the line. And I've created an intersection to say where it begins. I'm going to measure across um, to 11 inches, and that's going to be my piece of paper. And when you draw the first shape, you'll need to measure out yours the same size that I'm measuring out mine. So that's 11 inches. And then this distance going this direction is going to be eight and a half inches. And you will do that with the rectangle command and be able to get this shape a lot faster because of uh, using the software. And I will need to take my time with it to get it just right. Okay, so there's my vertical line, my horizontal line. And then um, with those tick marks now, what I can do is, of course, um, continue that shape across the page. So your notes, you don't need to draft this out, but you do need to draw a rectangle in your notes. And that will be the first step. So again, that's, that's what I'm doing here. I'm looking for my dark pencil, and I can draw that rectangle. Uh, 
I want to make sure these lines are visible to you um, as you go. Personally, I really love drafting. I love hand drafting, and this is a sloppy drop, but I want to make sure that I get this done for you. So that's an eight and a half by 11 inch rectangle. And I'll put those notes in red um, so that you can, you can find them easier. 8.5 inches by 11 inches. Okay. So that's where you're going to start. That's your first shape. And that's the first shape we draw in AutoCAD as well. Now, what I'm going to do with this shape is um, I'm going to offset inside that shape. I'm going to find a half inch margin on the inside edge of that shape. And that's the same thing you'll do as well, is you'll find a half inch offset. So I'm going to mark those off first with tick marks. And then um, after I've got it marked off with tick marks, I can darken, I can uh, make my guidelines. And then I can um, create the dark shape. So the, the tick marks are like when you set in AutoCAD, it asks you how far do you want to offset. And so what I've just done is told it how far I want to offset. Because we're dealing with everything orthographically, um, my, my parallel bar helps me keep everything nice and lined up. I'm going to draft in a strange way. I'm going to use the left-hand side of my tool because of where the light source is. Um, that helps me kind of move a little bit nicer for you. Normally, I would only use the right side of my tool because I am right-handed. Okay, but that's the next step is to create that set of offsets. And those lines are also going to be darkened in, so I'll need to darken those in next. Um, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to draw carefully to show two rectangles. The outside rectangle is 8.5 by 11, and then the inside rectangle is offset by half an inch from there. And that's looking okay on the screen, so I'm just gonna keep going. Boy, if my old drafting teacher could see the mess that I'm making of this drawing. Um, he would not be happy. He would make me redo the whole drawing because this is pretty sloppy work. So now I've got two rectangles. Um, one uh, is eight and a half by 11. The other one's half an inch smaller all the way around. Now in AutoCAD, because you draw a rectangle, you can offset the entire rectangle and you'll get all this as one piece, but then you will have to, um, you will have to, um, I'm getting a little pulse on the, on the focus there. You will have to uh, explode that inner piece because they're going to be individual lines and we're going to need to offset that inside again an additional two inches. So I'm going to measure again to come out two inches like this. And I'm going to put a tick mark on there to show where that two inches is. And then I can create the vertical line that ties that one together. To create that. And this one, I don't need to uh, create the guideline because I've already got an established endpoint and I've already got the other endpoint established. So, you know, as I go, I can speed this up a little bit and that creates the boundary there on the edge. I'm still getting that pulse, so let's give it something to focus on. I think it's just that white page that's really screwing with it. Maybe if I have something to keep it focused on, that would be good. Let me pause the video and see if I can make that work. Okay, that's a little strange, but what I found here is that if I put something there on the screen with a little bit more depth to it, um, it's able to stay focused. So I've got a little, little bone that I found while I was fishing one time, probably an elk vertebrae. Anyway, I'll sort of balance that up on my, on my parallel bar and see if that doesn't help us stay focused a little bit better. Um, and we'll just have to move it around. Kind of gross, but that's just how it goes. Okay, so then up the side of the title block, there are um, some different uh, divisions that we need to make. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure up from the bottom and I'm gonna create uh, three more offsets up here at the bottom. The first one is going to be three quarters of an inch and then three eighths of an inch and then three eighths of an inch again. 
and that's going to create some tick marks for three additional offsets. Up at the top, I'm going to go ahead and create an offset at the top also, two inches down. Okay, and then each of those is going to have their own um, small line drawn across uh, to fill in the edge of that title block. So as I'm moving this up, and I'm going to draw one division right here, and I'm going to draw one division right here, and I'm going to draw one division right here, right here, just like that. And then I'm going to draw one more division right here. And I want to take a look and see how that looks on the screen. I'm going to pause the video again. And then um, we'll take a look and make sure that shows up nicely. Let me place the little bone on there, give it something to focus on. That's still not doing that, so I can't look. Let's do it again over here, like so. All right. Yeah, that seems to be working pretty well. So let me give you the dimensions on that. This is a three quarter inch space here from here to here. And notice how I'm drawing that dimension. I'm extending lines away from what I'm dimensioning. So I, I draw this one first and this one second. Those are my extension lines. And then I drop a line vertically and then I put my tick marks across that. And I'm pretty sloppy here because I'm, I'm backed away, but hopefully that is nice and legible to you. That's a three quarter inch offset. Okay. And then um, here, the, these two are both the same. I'm going to put in my extension lines. I'm going to cross them with what's called a dimension line. And then I'm going to put my ticks on there. And those are at three eighths of an inch. This one and this one are the same. Finally, up at the top, this is a two inch square. So um, the, the offset from side to side, I think that'll work better if I put it down here. This distance here to here, the space between those two tick marks is two inches. And then also the space here at the top um, between my side, that's also two inches. And then you'll recall there's a, there's a boundary that runs all the way around the boundary of the page. Every side, they're all the same, half inch. That's half inch. And this is what's going to constitute the lines in the title block. So when you draw your TTVL file, um, the outside border is going to be white on layer zero. The inside is going to be dark blue, uh, color blue on the, the layer TTBL line, L-I-N-E. The video makes a mistake. There is a uh, layer that's called T-T-B-L-L-I-N-E-S. All layers are four letters long. So you can take all those notes right here from my voice on this video, and um, then you'll have the, uh, the drawing that you need to have to start this. Now, there are some text objects in this as well. I'm not going to have the time to hand letter these for you, and you're fortunate because my hand lettering is pretty awful. But what we're going to do instead is I'm just going to give you notes. There is the word project title that is in here. And then down along the side at the bottom, there is um, the word project number right here. And then underneath that, there's the word date. And then underneath that is the sheet number, and it looks like this. It's a series of X's. With a dash. And it's always the same way. It's always a letter, a dash, and then four num uh, three numbers. Uh, we'll talk more about what that's uh, to do with in a later class. But um, for right now, I need to give you the height and position of those different pieces of text. So where it says project title, let me um, make sure I give you the right information. Where it says project title, that text height is one quarter inch. So this text height right here is one quarter inch. 
and it's positioned middle center. It is multi-line text, so I'm going to say M text. Multi-line text, uh, the text height is one quarter inch and its justification is middle center. That's an M. Um, and that will position that in the right place. Now down below it where it says project number and date, that information is, um, it is single line text. So you start that with just the text command, not MC. When you MT, when you want to start multi-line text, you can type MT. When you want to type text, you just type the word text and it's going to produce a single line of text. So the text height in this case is one eighth of an inch. And um, it is positioned, it is justified bottom left. And that's going to make its justification point fit right on the end of the P right there and right at the back of the D right there. That'll be the justification point of the text. That'll be where the grip is. And then we need to create an eighth inch margin by moving that text over from the edge because we're going to position it right on the middle of, between those two lines and then we'll need to move it over to the right one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to put that information right here um, that it has a one eighth margin between these two points so that we're measuring between the between here and here that's one eighth inch margin. Okay and then the text height one eighth of an inch the justification is bottom left and it's centered in the area. Vertically, vertically centered. Vert centered in the area. And that's true for both of those pieces of text. So this, this piece of information here relates to both the word project number and date. Okay, that's for both of these. All right, and then finally down at the bottom of the page, uh, we've got that, that, that X dash XXX, and that information is also going to be a um, single line text. It's justified as middle center and it's half an inch tall. So this piece down here, half inch text, I'm gonna say text to make sure you understand that it is single line text. It's half inch tall and it's um, justification is middle center and um, it is in the middle of that area centered inside that box, okay? So you need to have a piece of paper that looks like this. Um, I'll hold it here for just a second so you can do a screenshot if you need to, but I want you to actually draw that out. Take the time to see how this drawing is built um, from nothing into the full drawing. And do that first by hand, just as a sketch, and then you're gonna take that and go into your, uh, into your AutoCAD file and watch the video to learn how to build it.